In 2019, Taiwan's public schools introduced a new curriculum that puts more emphasis on hands-on learning and problem solving. It hasn't been long since the overhaul, but educators say it's already having an impact on student engagement. From open-ended technology projects that let students make mistakes to drama classes that heighten the senses, schools are slowly shifting the paradigm on what learning can be. We take you into the classrooms in our Sunday special report. Today, we've come to the Qingshan Elementary and Junior High School in New Taipei, Xizhi District. Here, a group of students are immersed in a discussion over a design project. Ideas ricochet back and forth as adjustments are made on screen. Their abstract concept becomes tangible with help from this laser cutter, which costs more than 10,000 NT. The steps in the process are complex, but that doesn't throw off these middle schoolers in the slightest. Meticulous measurements are crucial to get the intricate pattern carved just right on the wooden board. From coming up with a concept to making it a reality, this is a class on technology in everyday life. In the traditional technology classes, teachers make a finished product and then students replicate it. They'd follow the teacher's instructions on the process, assembly, tests. It was just an OEM mindset. What we're doing at Qingshan is letting our students explore their environment to find problems that need solutions. When the COVID-19 pandemic started, the kids discussed it with their teachers in class. We joined an online maker group. We wanted to help out medical institutions by providing face shields for all the medical staff hard at work. So the teacher offered guidance to our students on how to laser cut those things. Taiwan's new middle school curriculum offers a new variety of technology class. A key aspect of the new approach is to spark critical thinking and self-expression. If during the learning process you let children learn and work toward the things they want to do for themselves, that brings out their independent study skills. This kind of training happens to be precisely what the popular maker education is all about. Under this approach, students become makers, and education becomes about hands-on experiences. This friendly-looking soap dispenser can change color and sing. It was developed entirely by three dexterous students at the school. Their goal was to remind fellow students to wash their hands frequently during the pandemic. At the top, the main component is an infrared sensor. When it detects you, it dispenses hand soap. Then it starts making sounds. The indicator lights and the voice tell you the steps of washing your hands. While applying welding techniques, the kids get to understand how motherboards work. The students welded the pieces together themselves, and with some programming and a driver, they got the sensor up and running. Teachers are careful to guide the students rather than lecture them. It's meant to get students to actively explore instead of absorbing information passively. From the beginning, we wanted to invent something to fight the pandemic. So we started thinking about it from four angles. What do we want to change? What do we need to prevent? We also thought of some good COVID prevention measures that people often forget about. And we considered what kind of impact we wanted our invention to have. After considering these four ideas, we discovered that hand washing is the easiest and most important thing you can do. To take ideas off the drawing board and into practice, the children have to work together as a team. A student tinkers with the wiring under the car while the other manipulates a hot glue gun on pliers. They're trying to figure out how to get the car to move along the tracks. Pulling up the thin wire and gluing it down is a true test of patience. 
会接触到轨道的这两条，然后它就会导电，通过电线之后到马达这边，然后带动齿轮，带动后轮，它就可以往前跑。那这个这这两条呢，它会导电，就是因为有这个转动器接上电，然后我们用手转的方式，它就可以。If at first you don't succeed, try again. The teacher offers advice from the sidelines. Then it's time for test number two. 我们还是会有些技能培养，可是我最后其实都会希望他们是一个开放的答案。We still get them to learn some techniques, but in the end, we want to give them an open project. We tell them, okay, we've learned these three things. Now I want you to make something that you want to create. Under this mode of instruction, children gradually learn that before making something of their own, they have to learn some other things first. They also know they'll have a chance to share their own insights at the end. In this classroom, the kids apply their knowledge and learn from their mistakes. It's a departure from the traditional classroom of their parents and grandparents, where teachers were to be followed without question. When we talk about technology education, we're not talking about teaching kids how to write a line of code, how to use a tool, or how to operate a machine. What we want to teach is a problem-solving approach, one that involves thinking and making good use of technologies to solve problems. Before technology can be used to tackle problems, students must first learn how to identify problems by observing and thinking. How do teachers instill that ability in their students? This spacious classroom has no desks or chairs. There isn't even a blackboard. Students stand in threes. The goal is to keep the pens from falling to the ground by using the tip of their index fingers. After they get a feel for the movements, it's time for another activity. The teacher switches off the lights, and the students shift around the room to music, wearing laser finger beams. Plunged into darkness, the students can't see a thing, but their other senses are heightened. I want to open up their senses. That helps them learn how to be mindful, how to observe and explore what makes them different from others. With all this movement around them, they'll find that if they're all going at different speeds, different situations arise. They might bump into somebody else. Having grown up surrounded by technology, smartphones are a daily necessity for these young people. But that technology also distances them from each other in the real world. In these drama classes, the students learn how to get close with one another once again. We have found that kids nowadays are somewhat apathetic. When they are in this state of apathy, no matter how hard you try to impart something in class, if the students' senses are not open, they won't catch anything you're throwing at them. Technology education should show them how technology can serve people, how they can go from a state of no feeling to a state of feeling with all their five senses. The innovative course design has turned learning on its head, allowing students to see themselves in a different light. In terms of performance and expression, the seventh grade students are more proactive. They raise their hands, ask questions, and share their opinions in class more often than their eighth grade peers do. I think that the most important reason for this is that we've helped our kids build self-confidence. Whenever they raise their hand, I always let them speak. I think that if you're willing to say something, you've already made a breakthrough because you want others to know what you think. This new curriculum offers public school children an education previously found only in experimental centers. Traditionally, skills such as sharpening one's senses, recognizing problems, and putting theory to practice have been overlooked in society. But now, these new courses are getting children to think outside the box and develop their own fresh ideas, transforming the future of Taiwanese education.